Growing up, I think all kids hear the urban legends or old wives tales as they used to be known. Stories of things that happened in the past that you've got to be careful, don't act this way, this might happen. Or stories about famous people, pop culture type stuff. Urban legend is kind of a catch-all. And this is going to be so much fun as we go way, way back in the day. And I talk about some of the urban legends from the 1980s that I remember. A few of these I researched to kind of jog my memory. A few of these popped in my head immediately. Most of these urban legends I think I was hearing about for the first time around the same time and that I still thought movies were real. If you want to hear more about that, go all the way back to episode three. I did a whole segment on when I found out movies weren't real. This will almost act as kind of a secondary countdown. It's not a top five, but I do have 10 urban legends. And those of you who grew up in the 80s or even 70s or, you know, around that time, all of these are going to be familiar to you. And I'll be curious to know afterwards which of these you most believed was true. So the first two urban legends are kind of intertwined. So I'm going to combine them. First has to do with the child actor Mikey from the Life Serial commercials in the early 1970s. The actor who played Mikey in the original 1972 commercial was John Gilchrist. This commercial is so famous. It's one of the most famous commercials ever in television. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. I promise you, you have seen that commercial. Even if you're young in your early 20s, you still know it. Gilchrist was 11 years old in 1979 when this urban legend came to light for the first time. The story was that he had mixed Pop Rocks, which is a candy, that were little sugary dots. They would kind of pop and fizz and crackle in your mouth. So basically the idea was that if you mixed Pop Rocks that pop and crackle and expand and such with soda that also has carbonation in it, that it would expand in your stomach. So the story was that John Gilchrist had mixed Pop Rocks and soda and his stomach had exploded and he died. Gilchrist's mother got a phone call from someone saying, I'm so sorry to hear about your son in 1979. And even though she figured it was just some weirdo calling up about this Pop Rocks and Soda story, she sent her other son to the park to go and check to make sure he was all right. But that story, that story continued into the 80s, even though there was proof that John Gilchrist was alive. The story, the urban legend was that he had eaten Pop Rocks and Soda and his stomach had exploded. The Pop Rocks and Soda side of this urban legend comes from the idea that people thought that Pop Rocks were more of an acid-based mixture with either baking soda or vinegar in it, thus basically saying that carbonation in the candy and carbonation in the soda would just produce so much gas in your stomach that it could cause it to rupture. That myth was tested repeatedly and shown to be not true, but it didn't stop the urban legend from being everywhere. And it really damaged Pop Rocks, the brand. It was so bad that General Foods pulled Pop Rocks in 1983 due to the sales falling so bad. But don't worry, they are around and you can get them now if you want at pop-rocks.com. Go ahead, eat them all and drink all the soda you want. I promise you your stomach won't explode. Or will it? Another famous urban legend from the 1980s that I remember was the legend of there being alligators in the New York City sewers. The legend itself was of parents buying baby alligators as presents for their kids as pets and they're cute when they're little. But then when they get bigger, they're not as cute. So they get rid of them by flushing them down the toilet and they go into the sewer where then they grow super huge and angry and violent. Those stories date way back. Even though this is mostly just an urban legend, it began in 1935 
with boys shoveling snow and actually seeing an alligator in the sewer. And it's endured since then. I mean, I can remember going to New York City on a field trip in seventh grade in 1991, and we were still talking about alligators in the sewer. And it all came from one that got there somehow. Here's one that a lot of movie fans will remember. You all remember the movie Three Men and a Baby? I know you probably already know where this is going. The urban legend was that there was a ghost in the background of a scene. There's a scene where you supposedly can see this ghost hiding behind the curtains in the background. And this ghost boy was purported to have died in the loft years before where these scenes were filmed. If you had an old and worn VHS copy of Three Men and a Baby, maybe it would look like a ghost. But in the age of HD and 4K, you can see that it's a cardboard standalone of someone. And what it ended up being was a cardboard cutout of one of the stars, Ted Danson, in Top Hat and Tails. And the irony is, you actually see more of a close-up of that cardboard cutout later in the movie. And yet, somehow, this urban legend persisted forever. It's similar to the urban legend that one of the munchkins hung themselves in the background of a scene in The Wizard of Oz, but it ended up being a wild bird that they had put on the set with some other wild birds to make the forest look a little more spooky. Speaking of movies, another urban legend was that the set of the movie Poltergeist was cursed. This movie was a massive hit from 1982, about a family dealing with spirits in their home. It's got the famous scene where the daughter is pulled into the television. The curse idea comes from the deaths of some of the people that were in the film. Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann, the youngest daughter, she died at only 12 years old in 1989. Dominique Dunn, who played the older sister... She was murdered by a jealous ex not too long after the movie came out. There were other cast member deaths, but those were the two main ones. The origin of the curse comes from Joe Beth Williams, who played the mother in Poltergeist, saying that Steven Spielberg insisted on using real human skeletons in the movie instead of props because they were cheaper to get. Actor Will Sampson, who played the medicine man, actually performed an exorcism on the set at the end of shooting one day. He was one of the other actors who died, though he was in Poltergeist 2. One of the most common urban legends from all time to now is someone who has died actually faked their death and is still alive. The two I remember mostly in the 1980s were Elvis Presley and Jim Morrison. There were rumors forever, there are probably still rumors to this day, that Elvis, Jim Morrison, Tupac, that they're all still alive. As soon as Elvis died in 1977, there were stories that he had faked his death. The urban legends were that he faked it to escape the mafia, the supposed slip-ups and mistakes on his tombstone... When Jim Morrison died in 1971, the rumors were that he faked his death to disappear to get out of the spotlight. Interestingly, even Morrison's former Doors bandmate, Ray Manzarek, actually put a little bit of credence into that rumor where he would say he wouldn't be surprised if Morrison did it and showed up somewhere later on as an old man. It's like the same rumor behind the death of comedian Andy Kaufman where people think it's the ultimate joke that he faked his death in 1984 and he could still show up even to this day. Just read Weekly World News. I don't know if they still make that. They all say everyone's still alive. More of a simple and harmless urban legend that I'm sure even kids to this day hear is that if you swallow your gum that you've been chewing, it'll stay in your stomach for seven years. Naturally, this is absolutely not true. It's unknown where or when this urban legend began, but the idea is that if gum sticks so well to the bottom of your shoe or to the bottom of a desk in school, that naturally it should stick to your stomach or your intestinal tract. But read any real article, science article, and they'll say if it was true, then in the last 50, 60, 70 years, 
there'd have been evidence of that somewhere, but there's none. I will tell you, though, even though I've known for decades that this rumor is not true, most of the time I end up spitting my gum out. You could swallow it, but it's always like, what if there's a first time that it's true? I mean, there was one alligator in the New York City sewer. Another crazy urban legend that I remember when I was young was the story that Walt Disney had had himself cryogenically frozen. Disney died on December 15th, 1966, at the age of 65, and it wasn't too long after that a reporter for a tabloid newspaper claimed they had snuck into St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank, California, where Disney was being treated for his illness at the end of life. And the story was this reporter disguised themselves as an orderly, broke into a storage room, and saw Walt Disney inside a cryogenic chamber. And there were then rumors of when he was going to be thawed out, with there even being rumors that he was still being kept frozen underneath the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. Ironically, all-time legend Red Sox baseball player Ted Williams He actually did have his body and head separately cryogenically frozen. This was done in the hopes of someday, I guess, curing whatever ended up killing Ted Williams. But he was 83 when he died, so he wasn't that young. Here, as we get towards the end of this list, here's an urban legend that I thought was absolutely true. This probably... Of all of these, I thought was true, and that was that the Faces of Death horror movies were real. The original movie is from 1978 and is a coroner showing scenes of gruesome deaths, real and reenacted. And partially, it's filmed in a documentary style, so it makes it seem like it's real. It's sort of like the 1980 horror film Cannibal Holocaust, which that was also purported to be real. So much so that the movie got banned in a lot of places. And I know Faces of Death wasn't real, the sequel wasn't real, Cannibal Holocaust wasn't real. But yet, just a few weeks ago, I reviewed Red Asphalt, the 1964 Driver's Ed film, and that's got real bodies in it. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that something real snuck into Faces of Death. And we'll end this trip down memory lane through 1980s urban legends with another one that likely most of you have heard. And that was the story that the Phil Collins song in the air tonight was based on true events that he saw. The song is excellent regardless. It came out in 1981. It has probably one of the most famous drum solos in the history of music in it. But it's got this very vivid imagery that if you took literally... It sounds like Phil Collins saw someone drowning and they weren't able to be saved. There's variations where it was someone fell overboard on a boat that Phil Collins was on and they couldn't save the man. There are even some of the rumors where Phil Collins is supposed to invite this person that watched another person drown to his concert so then he could point them out during In the Air tonight. The true meaning is far different where he wrote it about the grief he was feeling going through his divorce from his first wife, Andrea Bertarelli, in 1980. So no, Phil Collins didn't see someone drown and watch another man not save them. But which of these urban legends did you think was the most real? Mine was Faces of Death. People told me when I was a kid that it was real people dead. But if you enjoyed this segment, I think I'll do an Urban Legends one for the 70s, for the 90s, in general. So much fun nostalgia.